It's good to be back with you again and for us to share together God's Word and, and the lesson that is for this, this week. Again, we're studying in the lesson some of the words and the prayers of Christ on the cross. In fact, this again is a continuation really of our last three lessons. We see Christ praying. We see Christ praying in the, in the, in, in the garden. We see Christ praying. We see Christ, all his life is, if, we, if you really think about Jesus on this earth, he, in everything he did, and if you go through, it's interesting. Sometimes just take time to go through the Bible, the New Testament, go through the New Testament and see the number of times that Jesus prays. And sometimes it will be where you, it'll just say, and he went off and prayed. Remember, before they went across the sea and the storm and everything, and Jesus went off and, and he was praying. So we should learn from that that everything that we do before we do it, we should, we should offer up to God in prayer and ask his, his strength. If our, if our master, if Jesus were on this earth, if he continued in everything he did, was in relationship with God in prayer, then how much more important it is it for us to do that? Well, this week's lesson is one of Jesus' prayers on the cross. <clears throat> uh, uh, from the cross, and this week's lesson, Jesus' prayer from the cross provides us the ultimate example of forgiving others in spite of the hurt they cause. Let's uh, it, it, uh, it is really two things, and I'll probably say this again. We see in Jesus, in essence, on the cross, he did just what he said we should do. And remember this point. He did just what he said we should do. He, in essence, we would say, practiced what he preached. And so let's remember that when we go through this lesson. If we can, before we go any farther, let's have a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for all the many things that Thou hast done for us. We're thankful for this day. We're thankful that we live in a country where we can have freedom to worship Thee and come to Thee. Lord, get, let us appreciate this. And Lord, in these hard times when, when our whole nation is, in essence, almost shut down because of the terrible virus that is through. But let us realize that all of this is in your plan and all of this that you know and all of this that you have control of. Now think as we look at thy word today and what you said on the cross and what you meant for us to do in life, these things let us take into our heart and desire and, and work to serve you and, and to follow your lead and to work with you as you, as your servants and your slaves. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. First, I'd like for us to read a scripture that really isn't in the in the lesson outline, and I but I think it leads us into the importance of the lesson and the core of what Christ, through example and through His Word, is teaching us. It is found in Matthew, the sixth chapter. Ninth, ninth through the fifteenth verses. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men your tr their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. In Luke twenty three thirty four, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. This was the words from the cross. The writer of today's lesson brings brings to our view three insights into Christ's prayer. The first truth is that God completely forgives and forgets our sins. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 8, 12 says, 
I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessness deeds. I will remember no more. This is God's new covenant. This was God's, in essence, God's new covenant with the Jews. Or first mentioned with the Jews and then through a whole world through Christ with all who believe in Christ. This promise was first found in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34, and repeated in full again in Hebrews 8, 7, 13. So we see this is the basis of our relationship with God. Uh, the Jewish people, his promised nation, they had been given so many things and promises. They were given the promise of the, of, the, of the Holy Lands. They were given all these promises and they were given ways to follow. They were given the law. Uh, and they were given the temple. They were given the, the ability of sacrifice. All these things were given to them. And in essence, in the Old Testament, we, we talk so much about the Jews, but if you remember, Christ, God, in the Old Testament, also had a relationship with those who, who were not his chosen people. Remember, the, remember uh, Noah got upset because of God's relationship with a non-Jewish nation. So we see that, that God... Has not he doesn't change from the Old Testament to the New Testament, but there is a new covenant, and this is a new covenant that was given, uh, that was going to be fulfilled, and this covenant would be fulfilled in Christ. This is a gift from God. On the cross, pray, uh, on the cross, Christ prays for His Father to forgive us, and He and He lived up, and He lived out of the mercy of God. God's had mercy for us when we do not deserve it. God's word said we should show it the same desire to forgive others even if they don't deserve it. The author of our lesson today was trying to pull these points together. I believe he was trying to draw us to the point to realize that what it is is a gift. When God, when when Christ said on the cross, when Jesus said on the cross, "Father, forgive them for no they know what they do," he knew that the forgiveness that he was the plan. He knew that he was an ultimate sacrifice. He knew that we and and had that love that would come to all of human race. Who was he asking to forgive? Well. We'll look at that a little more in the lesson. The second part of the lesson places can emphasis on the words, Father, forgive them. Who is them? The lesson starts off by saying, well, surely uh, them had to be all those that were, although he was referring to those that were around him at that time referring to the the things that the that the high priest the things that the uh, that the guards the things that the the crowd the things that the when they spat in his face all those things that led up to the cross and then especially those things at the cross those things when they when they drove the the, the spikes into his hand and on the cross, and then they lifted that cross, and it was dropped down into the hole. And and he, the, one of the first things he says on the cross is, "Father, forgive them." Now, for they know not what they do. That one, that 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 question, leads us into maybe the forgiveness of all humanity, all humanity. You know, we're dead. To, we're dead in sin. We're dead in sin. We're, we're of a carnal nature. We're that first sin that we that we talked about last week. This this also appears to be one of the first prayers that Jesus made on the cross. He he made this this prayer came out and he said it. 
And we know, we know that Jesus knew what would happen. And still this prayer of asking forgiveness for these who took part in his suffering. We knew he knew the full vision of the cross. Because remember back in the garden, he said, if, this be, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. So he had full knowledge of what was going on. He had full knowledge of what these people were going to do. And one of the first prayers, though, he gives out on the cross is, is actually a witness. It's actually a witness to the world. Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. The question asked in the lesson is, when do you forgive? And to someone who hurts you later, after the pain is, is worn off, or after you get a chance to think about it, or maybe you forgive them if they come and ask you for forgiveness. You don't just come to them and say, I forgive you. I know we've had this misunderstanding I know you did such and such, but I forgive you, and I forgive you with love and honesty. Christ asked these Christ prayed this prayer, and in praying this prayer, his love through all this through all this time his true love for us and his true love for what was happening and what was going to happen and his full knowledge of knowing what had happened i may have this in my notes later on but i want to put it in here right now uh in essence christ died for our sins so he is on the cross for because of us we are part of all humanity and christ is on that cross he takes on all took that he was a perfect sacrifice he took on all our sins and and hurts and pain the point in this lesson is if we follow christ's example we forgive people before they are asking before they ask us. The words they don't know what they are doing, that Christ forgave them, they ask for before forgiveness. It's amazing. We have the picture of the three of the three crosses. We have the Jesus in the center, and on one side we have the one criminal, on the other side we have another criminal. And one of the first words that these two criminals heard out of Christ was not cussing, was not swearing, was not distressed because of, of his condition, was, but instead, and about this time, I believe, was also when, when Christ takes time to bring his mother and, and one of the disciples right after this time, after these words, so they hear this, these two criminals, and just as mankind through ages hears, just as we hear, one criminal heard and he did not accept Christ's forgiveness. You say, well, Christ wasn't forgiving them. Yes, but his example, his, his, his passing on to the whole world that he forgave us, that he forgives everyone, that he forgives those that had spit on him, that he forgives. They saw the nails go into his hands. They were went through everything he went through, and yet, and they had the pain he had. He bore the same pain they bore, and yet he saw that, and yet one of the first things he did was he said, Father, forgive them. Now, this is what's happened continuously. People are, are brought to Christ's witness, to see that Christ, God's covenant, 
that he is there to forgive us of our sins, that Christ died on the cross for our sins. Some reject it. They re ridicule it. They make fun of it. And this is what one of the criminals do, did. And then the other criminal who heard these words said, he listened, and then he said, he gave a prayer to God. He gave a prayer to Christ. And Christ said, today you will be with me in paradise. Salvation was immediate upon the decision that was made. But it was a personal decision. It wasn't just a decision of, of action or outward action. It came from that, that, that prisoner's heart, that criminal's heart that was on the cross. So we learned here and we can remember here. And when he said to him, Jesus said, remember, he asked Jesus to remember him in his kingdom. He, he couldn't fully understand the kingdom. We don't know if this, this man's background. But truly, he, he, he accepted Christ. And, and in his heart, it was a decision that was made. If you'll read Ephesians 1, 6 through 8, you will see God's, God's grace God gives his grace before we ask and, and, and desire it. John 3.16 says, Jesus came into the world for the forgiveness. If we accept Christ, we are saved. This teaches that forgiving others, but others on the other person, they may not in turn return this forgiveness. Um, <laughs> why, do we, why do we forgive? We're going to, if we have time at the end of the lesson, we're going to review some of these points with questions. I, I love to, I love to uh, be with a group of people and, and, and questions are asked and, and, and the, on the question on the scriptures and, and have the back and forth discussion on the scriptures. And so we're going to try to do this in a, a, a way if we have time on the end where in essence uh, I'll ask the question and then I'll give my answer. Won't have time for your answer, but we'll try to think of them together as a point of, of reviewing the total lesson. But there is a point that comes out. We, we offer our forgiveness out of love. If our forgiveness is not accepted, then that is not our problem. That is not what we would worry about. What we should do is continue to pray. We should continue to seek, especially if that person is a brother in Christ. Because another thing we're going to try to do in a review of this lesson, if we have time, uh, is that we find that we really forgive both our brothers in Christ and our sisters in Christ because of one reason, and then we forgive a person who is not a Christian for another reason. But God tells us that we should forgive as he forgave. And I read that first scripture in opening, opening that is right behind the Lord's Prayer, or we call it the Lord's Prayer. The Lord had many prayers in the Bible, but his example for a prayer for us, a guide for us to go by when we're praying. The last point the lesson teaches is to put into practice what we believe. First, forgive, and forgive in faith. Mark 11, 25-26 says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Again, we see this scripture where it is more than, it is a command uh, that God gives in the New Testament. Uh, forgiveness is, is not only we receive forgiveness. Uh, remember the parable, uh, and I won't give it in full, but the parable of the, the person who was uh, forgiven of, of his debts and everything, and then he went out and, and once he got in good shape, he wouldn't forgive anybody. He, wouldn't, he didn't give for, forgive anybody of their debts. And boy, that, that, he was 
chastised. Now, God has said, you have received through mercy and forgiveness. You, you received this, but God expects us to follow his example. Again, we come up with a thing to work with him, not for him, but with him, to do as he had, has said, so we can serve him. And as Paul said, he's a slave unto Christ. He's free, but he's a slave unto Christ. That's an analogy difference, but it's the same. And so he, in the Bible it says so many times that in the New Testament that we should forgive as Christ forgave. We should, in essence, practice what we, what we say we believe. And we practice, and this is very, very hard. On the cross, Jesus practiced what he taught his disciples. In Matthew 5, 44, Jesus said, But I say unto thee, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to the, those that hate you, and pray for those who, spirit, who spitefully use and persecute you. I said Christ practiced what he, pre what he preached. Uh, did he not do that on the cross? In this one he said, Father, forgive them. Did when he said, Father, forgive them, wasn't he praying for his wasn't he praying for his enemies? He was blessing his enemies. They cursed him. They spat on him. They did all these things. And as he taught before the cross for his disciples, this same thing was displayed on the cross. And when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> I must say, I've had to ask God for forgiveness for as many, many times that I, in my weakness and in my time when I should have been strong, I, did, I wasn't, I didn't forgive, I held. You know, there's a thing that even non-Christians realize that holding hate and holding non and build up hate in your in your life because of something that somebody does to you, it hurts no one but yourself. That's who who is really receives the most damage. And Christ knew this. God knows that. He knows us from top to bottom. And that's why God gives us this command. Forgive others as he forgave us. What are the main reasons we are asked to give forgiveness? You ask for or forgive forgiveness to a saved brother in Christ so you can be so you can serve God in his service. If you have a, a person that you know <laughs> there's even when we take communion, what what are we what, isn't this subject brought up again? What we should think about before communion, one of the things? Go over the Bible and, 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 and study that out some. When we are, so many churches have problems because people in the church, they don't treat each other with forgiveness. They, they treat each other all right, if the person does as they want to do. But forgiveness brings unity. And unity is what Christ said. We're one body, and we are one in fellowship, and we're one in love. So these are the things that we should follow. You forgive, uh, you ask for forgiveness or forgive a non-Christian so you can do a witness for Christ. Again, we saw this on the cross. Christ forgave his enemies. And what happened? There was a person on the cross who, who turned to Christ, the criminal on the cross, and, and, and he accepted Christ. In essence, that's what he did. He accepted Christ. Uh, I wish I could just emphasize that point. That's what accepting Christ means. You bring Christ into your heart and he comes, you don't just know him. The other criminal knew him he knew he was there. He saw the same thing that one criminal saw, but he didn't accept it. He, he even mocked him, you know, as some of the others said, you know, come on down from there. 
And he even indicated that he might have thought he had the power to do these things. But no, not this one cr criminal. He turned and accepted Christ. He accepted Christ's love. And that's what we should do. We should accept God's love and let God come into our heart so we can be with him and serve him and so we can be witnesses for those around us. Christians should be different. They should be a people called out. They should be in this world, but they should not be of this world. And we should seek every day. Oh, we'll backslide. I'm not perfect. No one is perfect. Christ was perfect. He was the perfect sacrifice. We're not perfect, but we must not continue. Um, as uh, I don't know if it was, uh, I don't remember which minister I heard again the other day, which I've heard other ministers say. In fact, our pastor may have said it. Um, if, if we, it, the, the, the rich young ruler who left home and he found himself down there with the hogs, he said, oh no, this is not where I want to be. He didn't just continue to slop around in the hogs. Well, if we're Christians and we accept Christ, we want our life to be different. Not only when people see us, but when people don't see us. In closing, I would like to give an example of a 19th day century. Uh, I was really going to give one example and I changed it last minute because I couldn't find, I did my research and I couldn't find anything. And if I can find it, Maybe if we gather again next time, I'll, I'll give that one because I think it's a tremendous example of God's love. One of the most examples, I, uh, I'll say just a little bit about it. It was about a person who was, as a child, was put in the death camps, uh, uh, Jewish death, death camps during World War II. And her, her mother and her father and her brothers and sisters, and I think even her grandfather, they all died in that camp. And she had to uh, serve, well, I might have, I've started this far, I might as well go a little farther, but I'm trying to research and give you the actual time in person. This was probably, oh, 20, 30 years ago that this, the, I first heard it, but I've heard other ministers, I've heard ministers tell the story, and I've heard other teachers uh, tell it, and I actually got a chance to read the, one of her statements and transcripts of it. Anyway, she was in, in the prison. And she had to, she was put under this one guard, I believe uh, he was more than a guard. He, he, I think he really had responsibility for making sure that the quotas were made of, of destroying the Jewish people that were in that prison. And when the war was over, of course, she was, she was brought free. And she was talking, I believe in Chicago one night at a, at a, uh, a group of, religious of, of, at a church service, a church gathering of, of Christians. And she got up to talk, to give her talk, because she had accepted Christ, and she was giving her talk on what it meant for to forgive and to be forgiven. And when, when she started her talk, before she started, she looked out there, and when she looked out there, she saw an older man, and she right away recognized that this was a person that while she was in prison, she had to take care of his, his house. She had to take care of his room. She had to meet his needs. And yet he was responsible for the death of all her parents. And when she looked out there, she said to herself, can I forgive? And she went ahead and gave her discussion, her talk, and much like we're doing today about God's forgiveness. And then when she got done, she looked again and she didn't see him. And some people had come forward to see. And she turned around. And there he stood. And she stood face to face to him. And she said that he said to her, Can you forgive me? And she said, I said to him, I have already forgiven you as Christ forgave me. Now, I wish I could remember the name of the words and all. But, but just think about that. That is an example of a modern day example, and that shows us we can follow Christ's examples. Oh, have you ever wondered about some of the little trivial things that, you, that you've uh, not asked or not given forgiveness for and are not asked for forgiveness? Are you not forgave someone? 
But think of that one. Think of that. Then there's another one that I'm sure you've heard that a young lady, she's not a young lady anymore, her, she was married, her husband was a pilot, a missionary pilot, and he flew into the area, and, and the people in that area came out to the plane, and, and he was killed there. They found him in the plane later. And then where, what did she do? She went back with her children. Her daughter went back and served in that same place, and people accepted Christ. And the person who killed her husband, killed her husband, came and asked for her forgiveness and accepted Christ. Now, there again, have we ever, have we ever experienced anything like that? No, we haven't. The only reason I bring these uh, points out, I've heard people say, well, you know, some things in the, God, in the Bible, are, uh, we're, we're sinful nature. We just can't continue to, to uh, we can't have that on a continuous basis. But there are examples of people living who have gone through no, nothing like Christ went through, but for our human beings have gone through terrible suffering and have turned and forgiven either the condition or have forgiven the persons or persons who have caused those conditions. I think we'll take just a few minutes to go through some of these questions that are at the end. If you have a quarterly, uh, this is the adult quarterly. If you have one, uh, that you study uh, in discipleship training. I call it training union <laughs> because I was as raised in the Baptist church. We had training union for a year. So now it's been changed to discipleship training. But uh, if you have this, you'll find in the back of each lesson there are questions. And some of those questions are, are very good, uh, very interesting and good to follow. I'm going to go through some of just these questions. I'm going to ask you the question. I'm going to halt. I'm going to hesitate, and then I'm going to give you what I think the answer might be. I wish we could be here to discuss the answers together. One of the questions is, what is unique about Christianity regarding forgiveness compared to our major world religions? What is unique? What is different? Uh, one of the best persons I heard dealing with this, or one of the best books I ever read, was written by Robbie Zacharias, who is, goes, and, is, goes all over the world preaching God's word, goes into some of the most dangerous places in the world. He's an apologist, and a Christian apologist. In other words, he defends Christ and Christ's word. And uh, he really brings it forward. But the really thing that is different than Christianity is that in all other religions, you, you, you get close to God, you get to see God, you get to be doing God's will by doing it for Him. You are try to become good enough are perfect enough, are more perfect, so that God will have pleasure in you. And Christianity is just the opposite. You can't do anything good. You cannot be good enough. You cannot go to church enough. You cannot sing in the choir enough. You cannot work on the church building enough. You cannot go to the hospital enough. You cannot have pity on people enough. You cannot do all these things in order to attain God's grace and God's love. This is what was on the cross. Cross, that's what the cross tells us. That's what the New Testament tells us. That's what the covenant tells us. We are saved by God's grace and God's love. So that is the difference, I believe, in all the others. I, I, uh, when I was young, I had <laughs> one of the things I was required to do uh, I had to take a book on, on world religions. It was written on world religions. And I had to study those things. And I really never thought about it back then, but I've thought about it more and more. If you even look in the depth, even in the Hinduism, even to where it says uh, uh, that you uh, are, can be, you can die and you're, you're, you're reincarnated into something else, but you're, you're keeping, you're keep, 
by it's based on your works. It's based on what you have done. But in Christianity, Christ is comes and gives us his love. And in Christianity, God has the ultimate sacrifice for us. And there's nothing we can do. We're saved by grace. If we do these things, we they it, it's not for our salvation. This is what the book of James is, is saying. If you are a Christian, you, you will, your life will be different. But it won't be different because you want to get closer to God. It'll be different because God has touched your heart and you have accepted that free grace, that free gift, and you're working, you're working to serve God. You're working to work and do what God wants you to do. What does it mean that God only forgives but also forgets? We went over this. This is in, in part of the New Covenant where, where I said you can, you can go back and read in Jeremiah and you can read in the book of Hebrews where, where God, in essence, it says in the Bible, he, he forgives us our sins. He, he for, not only forgives us our sins, but is forgotten. Uh, I've had the question said, well, what about the judgment? Well, in the judgment, those that have not accepted Christ, it is a judgment on what the main thing was that they had not accepted Christ. And so they are eternally separated from Christ. Yes, there is a, a, a and, and we will come with Christ and Christ, we will stand before Christ and Christ will let us know what, what we have done for him. What we have done not to obtain his salvation, but we've done what we have done following his will following, seeking His will in our life, and following Him. These are the differences, I think, in what it means in, in forgiveness. What is mercy? Well, Christ's mercy we've already seen. I want to take one, just one last phrase, and that is uh, one last question. There's, a, there's several more in here, but we'll just take one more. What is the essence of Colossians 3.13? I'm going to read Colossians 3.13. I have it written down here. Bearing one another and forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. Bearing one another, being close to one another. Each one of us are Christians. We should be serving each other. We should be wanting to witness to each other. And most of all, we should both all realize that we're sinners. And there are times when our old sinful nature, we will put ourself in front of our religion, in front of our relationship with our brother Christians. So we must be forgiving them. And we must forgive them. And in turn, we must ask their forgiveness of us for our times that we are short and our times. My goodness, if Christ on the cross, if Christ on the cross could look down at those people, and if Christ on the cross out of love and compassion could say, Father, forgive them. Can't we forgive? If people that we have seen that are just like us, sinners like us, but have accepted Christ, if we can see like those two examples, how when such terrible conditions, they forgave the people that caused those conditions. Can't we as Christians love each other and forgive each other and continuously try to bring harmony in the church? Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for what you've done for us. We're so thankful that you gave us grace. We're so thankful that you have given us the opportunity to serve you and to follow you and to work with you. And Lord, please, we ask you to forgive us of our shortcomings. You know our thoughts before we think them. You know everything that we are. You know everything that we will be. You know everything that we do. Lord, we come in humility. And Lord, most of all, let us be like Paul and uh, and and at time and be thankful for not only the mountain peaks, not only not only the times when things are good, not only the times when we 
have success and we know what we need and we just we just are very happy in life. But Lord, let us realize and let us realize that it is wonderful that the times that we're not on the top, it is wonderful when the times that we can serve you and we know you give us your love and your compassion and we know that you give us your strength when we go through these times that aren't that good. Lord, let us remember you in the times of success. Let us remember you in the times of failure. Let us remember you in all the times of our life. And more, let us make Christ our example when he was on the cross and he looked down and he said, Father, forgive them. Lord, let us realize that the persons, one of the persons that he was forgiving was us, each one of us, because truly we are part of the nails that were put in his hands. It is our sin that he died for. It is our sin that he came to perfect sacrifice for. We didn't deserve it. There's nothing we can do. But Lord, we thank you and we love you for your grace. And let us take your love and give it to others. These things we ask in Jesus' name, who died on the cross for our sins. Amen. I enjoyed being with you today.